everybody, it's Kevin Hoagland with Gold Trails, and I want to share with you my get together at the Bod Claims in Mojave County in Gold Basin in Arizona. So, it, what a great day. We had a fantastic day. Now, once again, a lot of people want to come out and, and use their detectors and learn more about their detectors, but we also had some other prospectors and miners out there, and that was very, very important. Gold Basin is an incredible area. When I first started prospecting there, I did what a lot of people did. And I, I just went into the washes and I started getting gold. The, the oldest saying about Bod is that wherever you put a shovel, you're gonna be able to find some gold. I was happy with that for a very short period of time. Then I started thinking about it. If I've got this gold, there has to be more. I really need to start doing some better prospecting. I needed to really find out a lot more about that area. And that's exactly what I did. So I spent a lot of time. Going back to really looking at the area when you're driving into it, it is very, it's very hard to understand because it looks all nice and surreal. And But what a lot of people don't see is the absolute geologic violence that created that. And that's been covered up over millions upon millions, if not billions of years. And it was after I started understanding that violence that I was really able to get onto the gold and really start to find good gold. And there are a couple of very big key indicators that are all over Gold Basin, not just on the BOD claims, but all over Gold Basin. And that's what's created commercial mining operations in the past. There's a lot of people that are out there that have claims, that have plans of operations, and they're out there digging on those claims. They're doing an incredible amount of work and they're using the same knowledge and things like that that I picked up years and years and years ago by just trial and error. The whole idea is to eliminate a whole lot of that trial and error and give you the tools that you need to get out there and get on some gold. The real purpose behind the gold trails is one simple thing. Ask you to look at the ground and the world a little bit differently. Use all the clues, use all the tools that everything tells you to be able to find more gold. That's it. I took some time really talking about how to look at the ground differently, to take all of the knowledge that I have of the area, which made me really successful in Gold Basin, share that with them, and then take them on a walk. For those of you that are new to desert prospecting, for those of you guys that want to get set up, go. I'll be around. We'll, we'll, we'll get set up. But I also want to do a little walk just around this area and kind of give you a better idea of what it's like to look at desert prospecting and different things like that. So. Uh, but I don't want to take from your time of getting out here and getting on to some gold. But if you haven't done this, I really feel like you need to at least take a little bit of time, let us walk through here, look at the different mineralization and things like that, and kind of get an idea. How many are in on that one? Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's separate. Hold it. How many hands was that? Okay, it's everybody. Okay. <laughs> On the walk, we looked at a lot of different things. We walked, looked at how the floodwaters had moved through there, and, and I was showing people how to look at the debris. Something as simple as desert grass packed up around the base of a cactus to show the height of the water, and then also how to track and see how that water was moving to see if it was moving anything down through there. And you can take those little things, do a little testing and sampling, and see if you've got gold. And if you do, then you start tracing that back. Now, fortunately, we were able to find two pieces of material, which this material right here changed my life as far as hunting gold basin is concerned, and especially the BOD 10 and 11s. A lot of people would consider this as a, as a conglomerate, but it doesn't necessarily fit all of the category of conglomerate because it's all angular. And what's really classified as conglomerate is the rounded pebbles and so on like that that are formed during water events or alluvial events and so on like that. And then everybody considers this as a breccia. And these are the tools that I used and found years and years and years ago that really helped me out. If I'm walking down a, a wash and I'm just looking at all the material and looking to see where I might be able to find gold, well, if this is sticking out of the side bank, and it doesn't matter if it's a foot from the ground or five feet or 10 feet up if I'm in a deep wash, where that material is, that tells me a lot, and I will go to that material, and I will start testing and sampling above it, not below. I will test above it, because I've done a lot of testing below, and yeah, I'll get onto some gold, but this is simply a false bedrock, and it follows 
a lot of the bedrock that's in there. Now, does this carry gold? It absolutely does carry gold in some instances. Not all the time, but a lot of times out there you can find gold, but it's tiny. It's, it's generally not deposited in a way that, that is going to offer you anything. I really want to work the material that's on top of this because of the millions upon millions, if not billions of years that followed this material, this breccia coming in and, and forming the just the, the natural decay and everything else that came down through there through either water events or a really fast moving alluvial fans and so on like that. So I, I will always look for this. This is this is one of those dead giveaways. And I'll work the material above it because again, acts as a false bedrock. And because of the way that this laid in, I have found in most places as this moved in, and let's say that it is filling a dip that, that's absolutely on the bedrock, this had a tendency to pick up almost all of that gold and move it. And sometimes it got conglomerated into this and other times it just got pushed. And then that became some of the just natural plaster deposits that are out there. Now there's a lot of hard rock mines in that area as well. And most of them were founded on vertical veins with slight dip. So that tells me even as this material came in, it was ripping verticals, you know, ripping these, these gold quartz bearing veins and just stripping those out and depositing in this or not depositing it in and just moving it around. I mean, there's, we weren't around billions of years ago, so we can only speculate on everything that we, you know, just, we have to take the science and we go, okay, my hypothesis is, and if you know what a hypothesis is, it's nothing more than a best guess. But this is one of the greatest tools you can have in that area because it has been a wealth of information for me. And this sedimentary rock with all of these igneous rocks and all these metamorphic rocks all stuck into it, it just tells such an incredible story about the formation of this area. Now, this is why I was concerned about this being the shortest video ever because of living by a code of not giving up a prospector's or miner's spot that they're working. Before the two took off, what they did is they came over and they showed us their gold. And he told me exactly where he was finding this material. And I pretty much already knew because I'd caught them on camera more than once during the course of the day. And I walked over and this, it really got me excited because they were out working in this particular area. And like I said, I can't disclose where it is. I absolutely will not because I live by that code and, and I just, I'll, I'll hold to that. So I started looking around and what I found was the smaller gravels or the, the smaller angular gravels, this breccia in a lot of different areas there. And then when I found where they were exactly where they'd been working, I got really excited because I could find the layer. I dug down a little bit, found a layer of this and it was really thin, not a thick layer, basically about like this, but on top of it were years upon years upon years of rounded river rock in different flood layers. So we're talking about going back tens of thousands of years, if not even longer than that, to where that particular area had that much water to be able to stack that material in. They ran, if I remember right, that they ran 30 buckets and, and this is what they had. Now, that's a great day. That's more than a great day. For a lot of people, that would be a great year. Now they have a spot. Now they have a spot that they can continue to work on. And I will tell you, the only thing that I will say about this spot is that commercial mining that was in there years and years and years ago absolutely missed this spot completely. And they were really, really close, like from me to the camera close and they missed it. They completely missed it. At the end of the day, I could not have been happier. Everybody I talked to said that, yes, I learned something about the ground. I learned how to look at things a little bit differently. And that's what this entire day was about. So until the next time, be good to yourself, be good to others. And I only have one question for you. Why aren't you out here with me prospecting?